We're going to drill down on this question of the CPB1 app. This is a uh, application for cell phones that the Biden administration has put together to try to facilitate the entry of, frankly, what are illegal aliens. But it's a little more complicated than that. First of all, it's a, it's a fine example of how the media really treat the Biden administration entirely differently on immigration policy when the Trump administration was doing something similar. When the Trump administration was metering the flow of people using the migration protection protocols and having them stay in Mexico, that was loudly decried and covered by the media as a reason to object to what they were doing. The CPB1 app has several problems, but the first thing we want to talk about here is this trend whereby the media would attack the Trump administration for doing something, but when the Biden administration does the pretty much the same thing, what's the response? Yeah, Dan, look, and that's exactly right. There's a couple of main elements with the CBP one up. One is what you just described. I was there as a commissioner when we, it was our responsibility to um, implement the, the MPP, the Remain in Mexico program, as people know it. And the, the heart of that was act as a deterrence, right? Is that rather than release Yeah, they got to wait. Right, right. Wait their turn. Wait, wait their and turn. stay there. Right. And, and so, approved whether they really wanted to come. Correct. Had a deterrent value. Correct. It did. It worked, it worked fabulously. But like you said, part of the naysayer was everybody was losing their mind on the left saying, oh, it's dangerous. The migrants are forcing them to wait in Mexico. Uh, they're, they're being ex- further exploited by the cartels. And this is horrific. And we're, 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 we're actually facilitating further persecution. It went on and on. First of all, it was not true. Uh, whenever the migrants stayed in a state-sponsored uh, shelter in Mexico, none of that was happening. We sent teams down there, and they were getting better every single day. Uh, and the reality is they stayed in there about 60 to 90 days before they got their master hearing appointment in the United States. Keep that in mind, 60 to 90 days. Now, let's go fast forward to the CBP-1 app. So as you said, they get on a computer or cell phone, they fill a couple lines and make an appointment to come to a lawful point of entry. So the the idea behind the app is that they have their cell phone, they can register online, get an appointment, and then they still have to wait. Right. Just like MPP. Yep, they still have to wait. basically, they're still waiting. Still waiting. In Mexico. And and effectively – the objective here is so the Biden administration can control the flow across the border. Correct. Of entering between ports of entry. Illegally, correct. Because instead, they're going to show up at the port of entry and then make a phony asylum claim. Correct. But they're so waiting. That, that's right. That, that's the key here that you, the, the comparison is they're still waiting. Whether, whether they're waiting through MPP to go through their, their process in the United States or whether they're waiting in Mexico to get their appointment at the port of entry, as you just described. The average wait time now we're being reported now on the CBP-1 app, about 60 days. All right. So Where, the, where's so the, the outcry? So the Trump line is bad, yeah. evil, right. orange man. If, if, you, if you make but anybody the wait Biden in Mexico, line, right. the Biden line is fine. That's right. If, if, if under Trump, if you made anybody remain in Mexico for any reason, bad. But under the Biden administration, if you make them remain in Mexico, good. And recently... As I understand it, someone from CBB testified in Congress who said they're not going to use facial recognition or facial comparison software for anybody except the head of the household. Yeah. So they could have rent kids and all kinds of stuff coming in with them, right? That's right. You could come in with a mother, father, and eight kids, and they're only going to use the facial comparison on either the mother or the father. So this is channel the illegal flow through ports of entry. Correct. All this so it's defined right. between ports of entry. Correct. Which is what the Biden administration wants to do. Right. But they're more than happy to facilitate their entry it basically illegally through channels. Correct. And that's it. Channels. So 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 not only the hypocrisy about regardless of why you're waiting in Mexico, again, under Trump bad, under Biden, somehow it's good. But the other part of this whole process, it's a head fake. It's a it's a sham. It's a shell game. They've literally transferred the crisis from in between the ports of entry to the ports of entry. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you look at the stats, when Biden took over uh, the ports of entry, they were, they were processing about 24,000 otherwise inadmissible uh, illegal aliens, about 24,000 thousand a month. His first year in office, that jumped to 45,000. Last year, that jumped to 75,000. Last month, it was 85,000 in a 30-day period OFO. So in the first 25 months, OFO, what the numbers of illegal aliens they're processing jumped over 240%. They are literally shifting the burden of crisis from in between the ports of entry to the ports of entry. They made a deal with the entire world. Hey, if you stop illegally entering in between the ports of entry and filing a fraudulent claim, we'll let you get on a cell phone, uh, make an appointment to come to a port of entry, while we'll continue to look the other way. And enter illegally. And enter illegal file fraudulent claims. 
At the same time, they're using advanced parole to like let Correct. people come That's in. That's part of CBP in. one up as well. Yep, yeah. four countries. They're illegally using parole. They're saying mass parole. Parole is supposed to be used for uh, on a case by case basis for specific public benefit right. and or humanitarian need. Very rare. Very rare. When when I was at SAC, I had to work with ICE if I wanted to bring a Mexican citizen over to be a witness. To participate in a significant criminal investigation we had going on, I had to jump through, jump through all kinds of hoops. And now this administration said, nah, we're going to waive the case by case. Again, uh, what was your line about Secretary Mayorkas? Oh, he uh, sees the law as an advisory opinion. Yeah, advisory opinion. So this is another one where he just sees parole as an advisory opinion, and he's just mass parole. If you're from those four countries, just being from those countries, you can use the CBP-1 app and be paroled in up to 30000 a month. Now, the CPP-1 app, was that ever authorized by Congress? No. Is it under regulation? Is no. it something that was ever established as a— Just made up. And how, how do we uh, have the way to verify the uh, veracity of the thing or anything? We, I mean, we don't, and that's the other and thing. And isn't, isn't it a matter of security, too? Because, yes. like, cell phone and Wi-Fi service is notoriously hackable down there and the cartels and stuff. What about privacy? Well, uh, those are some all good questions, but here's what we know. We already know that advocates are going down there, and they're already just giving them the boilerplate things. They're helping them fill out the application. And as you said, what they've done, that they, they've simply... And now, oh, by the way, the, 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 the Biden administration, they're calling the CBP-1 app now a legal pathway. So they're actually, it's a perversion of the law. It's in violation of the law. They're literally facilitating turning their heads the other way while they know illegal activity is going on, and now they call it a legal pathway. So they can claim victory and say, oh, look, well, the numbers of those illegally in, in between the ports of entry have gone down, and that's a good it's thing. It's all about the optics. It's all about the optics. But it's not that's about it. the numbers. It's, it's not, as far as it, they're concerned, the whole country can come into the country one way or the other as that's long correct. as they— Wink and nod. That's right. It's not about what's in the best interest of the safety and security of our country. It, what they're trying to do is address the bad political optics by making it a, a seem taking illegal activity and you know couching it under terms of a legal pathway. That's what they're doing. Meanwhile, you know, drugs are still pouring in, criminal aliens are still pouring in, and potential national security threats are still pouring in. Like you said, you know, you can come in a family of eight. They're only doing the facial comparison on one. And why are they doing that? Because their their goal is not to vet these people to really know who we're actually letting in, right? So we can protect our country. That's not their goal, Dan. Their goal right now is, as the chief of the uh, border patrol, Ortiz said in his testimony, they become a processing enterprise. Their goal is to process them as fast as possible and release them to avoid bad political optics from being overcrowded, and they claim victory. And when the chief of the border patrol says that to Congress, does DHS have operational control of our entire border? No, sir. The administration doesn't have a response? Zero. Zero. Because, look, that they like that. I mean, th that's what they want. They've turned the Border Patrol in from a law enforcement agency whose responsibility is to safeguard our borders, to protect this country from bad things and bad people from coming in. And now a large part of their mission has substantively changed substantially to becoming a processing enterprise. Those were Chief Ortiz's words. That's what the Border Patrol is. They've shifted from an enforcement-only entity to safeguard our country, stop drugs, criminals, and potential national security threats from coming in. Rather, it's to process illegal aliens coming in as fast as possible. Well, public needs to make its views heard on this. This yep. is not what the law says. It's not what this country is all about. Yep. We're a nation of laws, and they're being disregarded routinely by the administration. And that's why, Dan, that's exactly right. And that's why you should be demanding, getting get your congressional members and demanding that Secretary Mayorkas be held accountable. And this isn't about a difference of policy or politics. This is about the, the first time in our lifetime the secretary of a major department has come in. And as you said, hey, the laws? No, they're just an advisory. Uh, he literally has supplanted a separate but co-equal branch of government uh, in Congress, and he's refused to enforce the laws. He's made up his own laws, and he's directed the men and women who have the statutory responsibility to enforce the laws to not do so. He needs to be held accountable. He and needs it's to funny, go. he actually had Republican support for his confirmation, yeah. right? Mitt Romney voted yep. for him. Several others voted for him. Yep. So they says, were going to hold slipped. him accountable. Yep. He says they're right. They, that's right. That's right, Dan. They said they're going to hold him accountable, and they're not holding him accountable. Remember, this is a guy who for two years has said, who's lied to the American people and said, our borders are secure, we have operational control, and the chief of the United States Border Patrol last week testified when he was asked, 
do we have operational control? And he said, no, sir, we do not. So in some perfect world, if he were impeached, my Marcus, mm-hmm. what would prevent Biden from putting in somebody worse? Well, I think there's a good chance he would. But here's the difference, though. I always just say this, is that in all aspects of life, really, sometimes it's not the destination that matters. It's the journey. It's the messaging. Exactly. That's exactly right, Dan. So for the first time in over two years, the American people would actually get to hear the truth with respect to how and why we got here and what needs to be done to fix it and who's responsible for the crisis. Who is responsible for more Americans that have died from drugs in a year period than in any time of our history? Over 100,000. That's more Americans have died from drugs than all Americans died in, in, in the Afghanistan war, the Iraq war, the Vietnam war, and all terrorist attacks of this country combined in a 12-month period. And the number of fentanyl deaths are growing exponentially every single day. And we know that criminals, convicted murderers, rapists, and gang members are pouring across the border. We've heard about the potential national security threats. What Secretary kind of a, Myricus kind of a, resigns what kind of a over that. A person would actually allow that to happen. A, a person that is incompetent should not be secretary. You, He's, you think right. it's just that? Incompetence? Oh, no. Well, well here's what I'll say. I, I think personally, Secretary Myricus is driven. Let's get to the brass tacks. Yeah. What do you really think yeah. of my workers? So th- I, I, I do. I don't think he's a politician. I think he's an ideologue. So I think he's driven by personal ideology. But what I found is when you're driven solely by personal ideology, it makes you ignorant because you're devoid of the facts, what about truth, the fact and reality. That he's so dishonest. Oh, it's, so look, I, I mean, ideo- ideologues tend to be zealous, but they're honest about their zealotry. What about his deceit I, I, and his lying all the time? Yeah, see, I'm not seeing that. I, I, what I'm seeing now, a shift in this country, is that if if you're if if you're driven by your ideology, you've convinced yourself that the pursuit of your ideology, everything else is— I think he's just an incompetent opportunist, personally. Yeah, see, I, 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 think what, I think part of what we're seeing, Dan, with ideology in this country is they've justified that the end justifies the means. So as long as, as whatever I do is in pursuit of my ideology is okay, so I can lie, steal, and cheat, as long as it furthers my ideology because they're so wedded to that. And you That's think what my I see, Marcus would keep doing this if he thought he was going to be accountable for the murder and death— of thousands of Americans, yep. drug overdoses, yep. car, uh, cartel operations, yep. illegal alien drunk driving, the whole nine yards. Yep. You think he would still do it if he really believed he would be personally accountable? Yep. Because, it, look, you and I were talking. Look at him like in going the, to jail, you think he would be doing it? Uh, yeah, Tried because I— for treason? It, because I don't believe— you really it. believe that he'd be willing to sacrifice anything I, I, I think I think that— he doesn't believe that will ever happen. That's what I think. Well, but that's a different question. Yeah, it is, but... Um, I mean, I think it, it's at it, it, the bottom line, he's a coward. Oh, I think he I think is, he's too. he's a coward. I think he, he is, too. he won't tell people the truth about what he's doing. Totally He's agree. afraid of the truth. He, 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 he manipulates the truth, he spends the truth, and he just blatantly lies to Congress and the American people. Look, when he, we, we now have him 100% in a lie. The chief of the United States Border Patrol under oath said we do not have operational control. We have the secretary saying exactly that with your own eyeballs. Right. Well, exactly. But what I mean is— he calls that operational control, then he's obviously removable because he— it's like basically saying that somebody who's— the Department Secretary of Transportation is watching trains, uh, planes and trains Correct. collide. All the, oh, wait, we have that already, don't we? Right, right. And they're still in office. That's exactly right. And so, so there's squishy Republicans that are saying, well, where are the high crimes and misdemeanors? Uh, first of all, it, it, it doesn't have to be the, 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 the criminal uh, uh, version and definition of high crimes and misdemeanors, first of all. It's been very clear to find. You can get it through abuse of power, abuse of authority, and the public's loss in the, in the justice system. Uh, the, those are all impeachable offenses. But here, just set that aside for a second. Here we have black and white now, black and white as of, as of last week, that Secretary Myricus lied under oath to Congress when he said we have operational control. That in of itself is enough to impeach him and remove him. My constituents are saying, who's accountable? Who's accountable? Who's paying a price? Who got fired? Well, you haven't been fired. You should be fired. I plead exhaustion, Mr. Secretary. You've exhausted the patience of the American people. You should resign. And if you had integrity, you would resign. But I still am not seeing the movement by Republicans to hold them accountable. Dereliction of duty. Yeah. Failure to carry out a fundamental Absolute. responsibility. That's right. Patrolling our borders. That's controlling it. our borders. 1.7 million it would gotaways. It would be like the, the Secretary of Defense refusing to deploy the military to defend, and say, an invasion from Cuba, uh, Florida, or what have you. Agreed. Or the Chinese taking over Hawaii. That's another great like, point. What, what do you have to do to remove somebody from office? That's... It, 
I've been asking the same thing, and that's exactly right. Uh, it, it's it, it's unconscionable to me right now that this hasn't been one of the major things that, that the Republican Party in the House have taken on. Uh, we, we've been talking about this for a very long time. They've talked about holding him responsible. Look, uh, Speaker McCarthy has said that in, in a speech, right, about that they're, they're going to hold hearings and, and, and hold him accountable. Um I'm, I'm not seeing this, the aggressive movement to hold him accountable, the secretary accountable, as I think we should. Where's the beef, as he used to That's say. Right. That's right. That's right. That, that, that ages us. <laughs> You're looking great, Mark. You too. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Matt.